So in able for you to create realistic renderings, you need a well-structured 3D model with good source of lighting, with high quality materials, a rendering platform and post-production. Now we understand SketchUp is a modeling platform and couldn't have all of this, but they've made some efforts with the new features in SketchUp 2025. So in this video, I'm going to break down my workflow on how I created these images using the new features in SketchUp 2025 and Photoshop. So now let's get into the new features of SketchUp 2025. The first brand new feature I want to talk about is the environment tab, which allows you to import an HDRI into your model as a light source. So here we can try a lot of different HDRIs and you can see right there in the background of a model. So as I switch between different HDRIs, it's supposed to affect the materials in my scene and enable for you to see that we're going to turn on the next new feature, which we'll go into more detail later in the video. And that is the realistic materials. So you want to go into style under face settings. You want to click this new icon, which is display for the realistic materials. And now you can see that the materials are very much affected by the HDRI. For example, you can see that the ceiling reflects the green and the floor also reflects the sky of the HDRI. So for this exercise, I want to stay as true to the actual colors of the materials. So I'm going to import my own HDRI by clicking on this plus icon. And for those that are interested, I got this HDRI from Polyhaven called Small M2 Room 01. And now that I have this on my scene, you can tell that the interior has the same warmth of the HDRI. If you want to edit your HDRIs, you can go over to edit. And you will see a couple of settings here. You have set sun location and this allows you to manually place the sun in the position that you want to. So you can use these sliders to adjust the sun location. And you can also see how that impacts the lighting in the scene. And you have additional settings to use environment has skybox. As you can see, this turns the HDRI on and off. And you also have use environment for reflection and this controls the reflections on the materials. And down here we have additional settings to rotate the HDRI. So you want to find the correct position that your lighting is best. For example, this right here creates a lot of problems for the floor, which is very reflective. But you can also control the sky dome exposure, which is the brightness of the HDRI, as well as the reflection. So you can tone that down if you wanted to. So this is going to be my lighting setup. I actually changed the HDRI to Photo Studio 01 because it gives me better reflection. As you can see, this is an HDRI of a complete interior with very little overexposed areas. So I think we are okay with the lighting for now. We might do more adjustments later in the video, but the next thing we're going to look at is the supports PBR materials. As you can see, everything pretty much looks a little bit flat with no reflections. And if we go over to the material tab and select this wood material, you get your typical color adjustments and size and opacity but if you scroll down you see that you have additional settings so now you can adjust the metalness roughness at a normal map and an ambient occlusion the metalness setting controls how much the material will reflect because this is not a metal material we're going to keep this at zero roughness also controls how sharp the reflections will be so we want to have this somewhere in the middle and to add a roughness map, you want to click on this plus icon. So this is our roughness map. And we can still use the slider to adjust the texture. As you can see, it starts to reflect pretty nice. So now let's add the normal map icon. And we can also adjust this slider to control the strength of the normal map. If you go too high, it starts to look very unrealistic, although this is pretty impressive for SketchUp. So let's keep this at a very low value, somewhere around there. Now for the wood table, I also like to add the ambient occlusion map as it could add some more details into the grain of the wood. 
and once we bring a texture in you can see that it looks a lot darker because it blended both of those textures together because this is looking too strong we're going to take down the value of the ambient occlusion SketchUp also has its own material library that already has preset materials with all of these textures. So if you click on this icon here, it will take you to the 3D Warehouse material library and you will find a wide variety of material collections. So this is also another great resource that you can access with SketchUp 2025. So let's try to find a nice wood floor. I think this one will do. You can download that into your model go into your scene and apply that material so we can edit the material take down the saturation I think if you're really trying to achieve that realistic level you're gonna have to spend a little bit of time in your materials here in SketchUp and even more in post but you can tell that the materials did a great job in adding reflections and bringing some more life into the scene but there's obviously a lot of things that are missing. As you've noticed, SketchUp doesn't have an artificial light system, but I also think the scene can benefit from some shadows. Because I'm going to need extra channels to edit in Photoshop, we're going to set up the ambient occlusion. So we're going to select hidden lines from the default styles as our base. Let's go over to edit. And we're going to get rid of the edges. That's step two. And the third step is to add the ambient occlusion. So now we have just the contact shadows alone. And we're going to call this ambient occlusion. And the last step is to disable camera location in your scene settings. That way we'll be able to access this visibility settings from anywhere in the model. So we're going to disable this and then we're going to update. So now if I made this one of my new scenes and I wanted to export the ambient occlusion, I can easily click this and I can export that same image. As you probably noticed, I have an IDS for ID selection channel and I did the same thing. If I click here, you get the material ID. So let me explain to you how I have this set up. At the beginning of the video, I mentioned how important it is to have everything organized by tags. But another thing you want to make sure that you do is to set all of your tags to different colors. For example, I have my architectural tags, which only include door, windows, and walls, and they're set to different colors. If you go to the interiors, you see many other layers with the core and items furnitures and lighting fixtures and these are going to be all of these fixtures over here and lastly i have a selection id folder which includes and any colors that sort of mix with each other i set it on a different color id layer so when you switch color by tags you're able to see all the different colors so the next step is to disable back edges so we can have a completely flat image and you also want to go into the shadow settings, adjust the darkness to 100 and light to 0. So with these two extra scenes set up, I can go into any of my views. I can then simply export the IDS. I can turn that on and I can also turn on the ambient occlusion separately so I can control the shadows. So now to export the renders, all you have to do is select your view. Head over to File, Export 2D Graphics. Head over to Options, make sure it is high resolution and we can select Export. And without moving your scene, you will go over to the ID, save this as well. You will go into the ambient occlusion and save this as well. So once you export all of your scenes, now we can move over to Photoshop. Now, before I export my views, I actually made some last minute changes to the model. As you can see, it's the same model, but with a little bit more color, different materials and the core objects. But overall, I think this model will create more interesting renders. So for the post-production, we're going to follow a very simple workflow.
we're going to work on one image and translate the workflow to the rest of the other renders. So you want to make sure you're working with a smart object. And the first thing we're going to do is add a camera raw filter. So here I'm going to adjust exposure, contrast and highlights as well as a couple of other settings to try and work on the contrast of the image. Additionally, I'm also going to add a bit of texture and vibrance to enhance the diffuse textures in the image as well as pop some colors. As for the details, I'm going to add a little bit of sharpening and luminous to make the image slightly sharper. And in the HSL adjustment, I'm going to adjust the hue and luminance of my greens so my color is between green and yellow. Next, we're going to work on the shadow. Make sure to organize your layers. I like putting things in groups. So for my ambient occlusion, let's change the blending mode to multiply, decrease the opacity. And obviously we don't want the shadow to be this strong. So we're going to hold alt and click the mask icon, select the brush with a white color. I'm going to paint the areas where the shadow should be stronger in the render. As you're doing this, you want to note the direction of the light. As you can tell, the window is in the top left of the image. So I'm going to paint the shadows in the opposite areas. And right here is a good place to use the material ID to make accurate selections. And also be sure to adjust the size of the brush as well as the strength so you have better control of what you're painting. And also keep in mind that these are now final settings. You can always make adjustments in the future. So to keep working on the shadows, we're going to add some contrast. I'm going to duplicate my base render, add curve adjustment, and you want to place it on top of the base render. Hold alt and click between the two layers to clip them together. And adjust the curve layer so that the image is slightly darker. Next, we're going to hold alt and mask the image. And once again, with a black or white paintbrush, we're going to paint the areas of the image to enhance the shadows. So now that we've worked on the shadow, we're also going to work on the light and highlights. And this is done by creating a new layer, filling it with black and change the blending mode to color dodge. Select the brush with a white color and start to paint over the areas where you think light would hit. And this is really going to help enhance the light contrast in the overall image. Without making this video too long, this is the basic post-production process that I followed for all the images, considering we started from a SketchUp model. But as you can see, this is better than anything we've ever made before with SketchUp alone. Now it's unfair to compare these to V-Ray, Enscape, D5, or Lumion because these are more stable and complete rendering platforms. But it's safe to say that this is the beginning of something special for SketchUp and I'm looking forward to new features that will complement what we already have. Now it's obvious that it will take some time for these features to mature. It would be nice if these materials could reflect itself in the actual 3D model. We could use some improved sun and shadow controls as well as an artificial light system. But this is a great start for SketchUp if their goal is to improve model representation. So what do you think of SketchUp 2025 and its new features? Do you like them? Have you tried them? Let me know in the comments section below. As always, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Follow us on other social media platforms and I'll see you guys next time.